Well, it's that time of year again. It's time to talk about my favorite books of the year. Uh, we're going to start with my top 10 nonfiction reads of 2020. Welcome back, or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Katrina, and I make bookish content here on this channel, usually at least twice a week, but at the minute, you're getting it left, right, and center. Um, so do make sure you are subscribed because I will have a new video for you tomorrow, and the day after that, and the day after that, so you don't want to miss out on those videos. All of my social media links, including my blog and my Goodreads, are in the description box below, and I will leave a playlist of my previous Vlogmas videos linked up above in case you have missed any. Now this list as always is going to be in no particular order and if you're looking for stats as to like number of non-fiction versus fiction books I read this year that will come in my sort of review of the year that will be um, with you at the beginning of January because obviously we can't pick a favorite book for December until we've actually read all our December reads. However I do not have any more non-fiction books on my TBR for this month so I am happy to be sharing my top 10 with you today. I have one of these in physical book form and I have a few of these that I have talked about specifically in other videos. So one of my favorite books this year, non-fiction wise, is Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls. This is the third in their non-fiction series and this is 1000 Immigrant Women Who Changed the World and the, um, I did this on audio first of all, but then I wanted to get myself a physical copy of the book because these books have such glorious illustrations in them as well. Just such wonderful illustrations and end pages. And then at the back of the book, you find um, a whole list of the illustrators who are featured in the book as well. And so whilst the audio book was good, I couldn't live without having the physical book because it's just beautiful and I just love this collection of books. I have a video talking about the first couple of books so I can leave that linked up above um, but know that I enjoyed this one just as much. Um, then we have a book that properly brought me to tears. I think I shared about it on my Instagram rather than sharing about it on um, in a video. Um, and this one is Let's Do It, the authorised biography of Victoria Wood by um, Jasper Reese. And this one uh, is definitely one that if you can, I recommend doing on audio. And I don't feel like you have to be a Victoria Wood aficionado for this one. I think that if you're even, you know, aware of her having done Dinner Ladies or aware of the song that inspired the title of this book, then you will get something from this one. It is quite a long audio book. However, it starts and it ends with Victoria singing Let's Do It. And then each chapter is narrated by one of the people that she is famous for working with. And that's just wonderful. And I just loved it. And the last... Um, couple of chapters did just obviously make me cry because you know when you're reading about a book that's about somebody who has died it's it's always going to be a sad ending even if you know it's coming but I just really enjoyed the way this book was structured the fact that the audiobook itself is read by so many people that I associate with Victoria Wood I think that they just did such a good job of doing the audiobook that way I was just blown away and that is why it has made it onto my top 10 of the year um then Moving on, another one that I also read for Nonfiction November that I could almost guarantee was going to be on my top 10 list of nonfiction books of the year, um, and that is More Than a Woman by Catelyn Moran. Um, I just... I fell in love with her writing when I read How To Be A Woman. When it first came out, I read half of it on a train journey from York to Glasgow and the other half on the train, train journey back from Glasgow to York. And it was just an amazing time had. And I was kind of like snort laughing on this train, probably in the quiet carriage because that was the carriage that I booked. And ever since then, anything that she's come out with, be it fiction or nonfiction, I just love her writing and I just connect so well with her sense of humor as well. This obviously is um, the kind of follow up to How to Be a Woman, being like, okay, we're several years later now. Have we got it all figured out? What? You mean we haven't? What's going on here? Um, and oh, yeah, 
it's just it's just an awesome book whether you've read how to be a woman or not you'll get an awful lot from this one and again the audiobook is comes highly recommended from me because she reads it herself and so you've literally got that like comic timing perfectly done because it is her own comic timing and you kind of get these little asides as if they're read by her and it's just fabulous and it's I highly 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 recommend it even if yeah you haven't read her first one I definitely recommend this one it was so good I just wanted to finish it and then um pick it up and read it again uh yeah there's there's not a lot more that we can say about that um then we have a handful of books that i read and i talk about in a non-fiction audiobook recommendations video so i will leave that video linked up above because you can hear my full thoughts on these um in that video so first of all we have mum life by louise pentland which is her second non-fiction book but this again on audio is narrated by her and so we have these thoughts and these feelings literally coming from her having been penned by her and um, I really like Louise's um, obviously I've been following her channel for a while but I also really do enjoy her fiction writing and so I was excited when I heard she was bringing out a sort of not a memoir but a memoir of sorts um and one of the great things about this one is that um there are some sad moments in it and in those sad moments like you know you can hear her getting choked up you can hear her crying and it made me cry and so that to me is powerful because it takes a lot for an audiobook to make me cry even though there are a couple on this list that did make me cry um but i just really enjoyed this one and so yeah if you can do this one on audiobook i highly recommend and then another one that I talked about in that um, video is A Very Punchable Face by Colin Jost. Again, I did this on audio and it is read by him and it's just very funny and very open and very honest. And he um, kind of is happy to take the piss out of himself. And I like that in an audio book if someone doesn't take themselves too seriously. And I kind of, you know, w read this, listened to this in the break between the last series of SNL and the most recent one, I kind of like look at him in a different light now, but it kind of doesn't talk as much about his like total SNL career. It talks about his life outside of SNL and he goes into some personal stuff to do with his family and um, also just some um, hilarious trips and accidents that he has had, which is, you know, always a good thing. And then we have Weird But Normal by Mia Mikado, which again, I did on audio, but I think I would like to get a physical copy of this one so that I could dip in and out of it because this is a collection of essays. I believe some of them were previously published and some of them were just done for this book but um, they're just so funny and so relatable. She talks about the sort of frenzy that comes over you with Bath and Body Works and how they send you coupons that then make you go in again and then you go in again and so they give you more coupons and that whole, whole thing. Um, but that's just one of the many essays that is just just spot on you know in terms of retail she also talks about the, the joy of target um and it's like she was talking about me to me um and so i just really enjoyed it and like i say i probably would like to own a physical copy of this one so i could go back and dip in and read certain essays i suppose if i owned an audiobook of this one then i would be able to dip in as well because you can click and go to certain chapters but i did borrow this one from the library and it was fabulous um, and then moving on to a couple of other audiobooks that I do have full videos for, um, we have <laughs> a sort of surprise to me. This one is Iowadi on Top, and um, I did listen to another of Richard, Richard Iowadi's books um, on a road trip, and it just wasn't as good as this one. But because this one really just very, very specifically talks um, about View from the Top, and kind of dissects that and does so in a really funny way. I listened to it all in one chunk and then I watched the film and then I made the kind of book versus movie but not really just how reading this book affected my watching of the movie. Um, it just hearing, it's very, very weird hearing Richard Ayoade, who I know from like the IT crowd amongst other things and um, 
hearing him talk about this movie that I watched when I was a teenager starring Gwyneth Paltrow. It's just, it was a real like trippy evening that I was listening to this. I think I listened to it fairly early on in um, the start of like lockdown and everything. And so it was, it was, it was late at night. And then I made that video and yeah, it was a real different experience. And that is why this book has made the list. Um, and he does read the audiobook himself. So again, if you can, I do recommend the audio. It was very good. Um, I'm not sure if the physical book for that one would have particular like photos or diagrams in. I don't think he referenced all of them but i think he referenced a few things that you could see in the physical book um but he didn't do the thing that he did in his other book which was like oh you'll have to buy the physical book to see this because i hate when people do that because it's like no i've bought the audio book um i have bought your book i have you've got a sale out of this um and then we have um coming undone a memoir by terry white and um this one i again sort of listen to an audiobook all in one and she just talks so openly about her kind of um depression and her um battle with mental health and her um history and how that's fed into it and then how she got help and it's just the kind of rawness and the honesty and the matter of fact way that she writes about that that means that this book has made it onto my top 10 for the year like i say i did it on audio and i basically listened to it in one sitting but i had to kind of well, I listened to it over one day, but I did kind of stop a little bit because it does get very intense and there are definite care warnings for this one. So make sure you read the synopsis if you are thinking of picking this one up. But it's just the fact that, she, yeah, she's so matter of fact about what happened and how it happened and how she got help and when she maybe should have had help in the past and how she, you know, she probably had people trying to give her help, but rejected that because she just wasn't in the place to receive it. Um, and yeah, it was just so open and honest. And I don't feel like I've talked about this one enough on my channel. And so it has made it onto my top 10 nonfiction that I read in 2020. And then this one is not, um, this one is also a very kind of raw and open and honest memoir that deals with an aspect of mental health that we um, don't talk about enough. I mean, specifically in the UK, but I don't, th in the US as well, I'm sure I haven't heard people talking about this and it was just wonderful and wonderfully refreshing. And this writer's writing has always got to me anyway and so I will read anything that she has written um and this is what have I done and this the subtitle of this one is an honest memoir about surviving postnatal mental illness um and so this deals with um looking at kind of yeah the the fact that even when you are kind of obviously crying out for help you don't always get that help because it's just not something that is very well funded in the UK um, and is very well kind of, yeah, spoken about. It's like, oh, well, it's just the baby blues or, oh, well, it's normal to feel overwhelmed or, oh, well, it, you know, it, this this will get better. It'll just You just have to get better on its own or you just have to like put some makeup on or you just have to try a bit harder. And it's like, well, no, there's there's obvious signs of actual illness here. And there's obvious danger for mum and baby and everybody else. And so the fact that Laura Dockrell has written this book and talked so openly about it through her experience and detailed so carefully the times when, you know, she did ask for help and wasn't given it and the times when she was offered help but wasn't in the right place to receive it. I think that that is just so fantastic. And again, I listened to the audiobook, which is read by her, and she's, she, it's the fact that, like, her writing still has, like, humour in there and still has her kind of trademark way of, of talking and putting things, and I just... I just so enjoyed it. And then finally, I have um, something which I made a whole kind of reading vlog slash re series review of. And um, this is the... Um, Amazon original series from Mindy Kaling. So I've got the Once Upon a Time in Silver Lake here, but these are all 
It's almost like you've got podcast episodes, but if you listen to them all back to back, it's like you're listening to a six hour audiobook. And so that's why I've included it as one spot on my top 10 nonfiction reads of 2020. I listen to these fairly frequently. And as I say, I have that video um, detailing exactly why they have made it onto my top 10 <laughs> books, non-fiction books of 2020, because I just really enjoyed listening to these. Um, they are, I believe, still currently free if you are an Amazon Prime member. So links to all of that are in the description box below. Um, you can use my link to get a free trial and then uh, read these and then end your free trial if you want to. Um, and then even if you are um, doing the audiobooks, they're still free. So you have to click on the Prime book and then download the audio. And I, as I say, I listen to these back to back and it, they were just, again, open and honest, but with humor and heart at the same time. And I think that's a general, a general theme, um, through these books. And with the exception of Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls, I definitely recommend the audio of all of these, um, with the exception of Let's Do It. They are all read by the author. Um, Let's Do It is not for obvious reasons, but I do, I did enjoy all of these. I could see myself re-listening to any or all of these again in the future. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know in the comments what non-fiction you have enjoyed reading this year. I would really like to obviously add some more books to my 2021 non-fiction TBR um, and let me know if you have enjoyed any of the same ones that I have as well. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you are subscribed so that tomorrow's Vlogmas video lands in your subscription feed and hit that notification bell to be notified. Um, I still may have a live video up my sleeve before the end of the year. You never know. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in comments about your non-fiction preferences and I will see you with another video tomorrow.